Brett Okamoto with Dennis Bermudez, and Dennis, usually I preface your name with UFC featherweight or UFC lightweight, but I guess that doesn't apply anymore because you just retired about about five minutes ago. So how are you feeling now being a retired professional fighter? Um, it's bittersweet, you know. Hopefully people still think I'm important. <laughs> um, but, uh, like, right now, my foot hurts, and I, I don't feel like I'm going to miss that, you know. Um, I still plan on getting in the gym and, and, and try and stay in shape, and, and I have a lot of knowledge in the sport, and I want to give it back to the, the guys, that uh, the younger guys that I train with, and, and uh, give back to every, you know, to the younger generation, because there's a generation above me that gave to me, and I want to, you know, it's a kind, of, a, kind of a wrestling thing to, um, you know, to pass on knowledge. When did you make this decision that this was going to be your last fight? Um, I don't, probably like two months ago, maybe. You know, I started, well, I mean, after I lost that last fight, I was thinking, I, you know, I was thinking about retiring just because I was so confident I was going to win that fight and four losses in a row, like, that's not me, you know, and I don't, that doesn't sit well with me, you know, so after I got the loss, after, you know, after the third round, I really thought I won. You know, my corner came in and said, nice job, you pushed it, you won that fight, nice job. And then I got the results and I looked at them and I went, that's it, man, I'm done with this. I'm not, I'm not doing this, you know, three split decisions in a row. Like, no, man, this is bull crap. I'm not giving, I'm not throwing, you know, 50 grand away just because some judge doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, I'm not, this is baloney, you know, like wrestling, there's, there's, you know, it's 6-2, basketball, it's 102 to 92, you know, it's football, it's 49 to 7, you know, there's, there's, he clearly won. In this fight game, you know, I've been doing it for, like I said, you know, I've been in the UFC for eight years and I'm still a little bit unclear on what it takes to win sometimes, you know, because I, I outstruck Andre Feely, you know, like by 60 or something crazy like that punches. And then I took down Rick Glenn six times and he and he had tons of mat control and he only outstruck me by six punches. So I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. I don't, you know, I thought I'd learned from the Feely fight. So I brought that to the Glenn fight and it still didn't go in my favor. So in this fight, it was just like. Just get after it, man. Get in there. Get on the guy's leg. Throw punches. Get in his face. Get him tired. Um, so, yeah. So, after all that frustration that you just described, and you did it very, <laughs> ar you articulated it very well, yeah. why come back for this final fight then? Um, you know what? It was, it was actually kind of for my uncle. You know, he's like in like the, the third round of, of his life, if you will. You know, the, the doctors gave him six six months to a year to live you know he's got stage four cancer and um i kind of wanted to step in and and kind of symbolize that us bermuda's boys don't give up you know because i'm i was down four fights and and you know in the back of my mind is like dennis like do you even know how to win anymore and i've been fighting with those demons like dennis are you a winner i mean the results say different you know even though I watched those fights many of times, and I still think I won them. It doesn't matter, you know. Um, so I kind of took this fight as a, as a, you know, to symbolize to my uncle that man, if you fuck, if you if you put your foot down and and stick to it, man, you can do it, man. You're gonna live. You're gonna get this done. And, and then you go out and you have a performance like you do. Yeah. Is it hard to still take the glove off? Because we've seen a lot of guys be in that position and they say, oh, I can't go out now. Now I just look how well I did. You know, yeah. how were you able to then rip the gloves off and leave them in the center of the cage? I, you know, in, in this fight camp and there's been, you know, probably the last, a lot of fight camps. I, I get up in the morning to go to the bathroom and my body hurts really badly because I do everything the right way and, and I train really hard and I push my body to the limits and I've been doing that since I was, you know, 12 years old. You know, my body's kind of tired, I feel. You know, I'm 32 now, so it's a long time to just be grinding, 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 you know, because I've, I've never been a phenomenal freak athlete. I think I'm a really good athlete, but I think the reason why I've had success my whole life is because I outworked everybody. And I didn't have, I just, you know, I just outworked everybody, you know. It wasn't the natural gift, but the gift of just keep going, keep going, grind, grind, push through the pain, you know. And 
I want to relax a little bit. <laughs> if you could go back to yourself when you very first got into professional MMA fighting, what do you think you'd tell that guy right now? Do, keep doing what you're doing. You know, I, I, uh, I had a great mentality. I still do. Um, I was never a quitter. I always outworked everybody in the room. And uh, nice job, kid. <laughs> what, is, uh, what does retirement look like for Dennis Bermudez? Um, it's definitely me not hanging out on the beach and putting my feet up and drinking margaritas. Um, Why not? That sounds nice. I don't have enough money. <laughs> um, you know, and, and throughout my career, I wasn't done with my money. Um, I have a house. It's not a big house, but it's, it's enough for me and my, my boys. Um, I have a good car. Um, everybody's healthy. I'm able to put food on the table. I don't buy myself designer clothes. Um, I've got a little couple dollars in investments. And, you know, I'm looking to get into the workforce with a job that has a pension and, and, and benefits. And, um, you know, just just trying to be a superhero, you know, for whatever job I get into, you know. If, if this sport had a pension, do you think you would continue or do you think you'd still retire tonight? Well, I mean, the, you know, it's it's the thing is, is, is when I go out in there and compete, I'm not putting a guys away in the first round. It's rare that I do that. You know, I hit you, you hit me, and we're going to grind for 15 minutes. You know, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have that, that one hitter quitter knockout power. I'm not a submission technician where I can submit a guy, you know, really quickly. Um, so, man, I'm just trying to kick, take care of my brain. And, um, you know, I don't want to be drooling when I'm 70 and hanging out with my grandkids. And, um, you know, I'm going to try and take care of my body. I mean, with that being said, I think fighting has taught me a lot, you know, about diet, nutrition, my brain, um, stretching and work. And just it's I've, I've learned so much. I think I'm going to live a, a longer life with the knowledge I've obtained through fighting, even though, you know, I'm in there losing a couple of brain cells, you know, I, I'm going to, and I'm going to live a nice life. Well, congratulations, man. It was fun watching your career. Your fight against Matt Grice will always stand out to me 2013. I'll never forget it, and I'll never forget tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.